Hey guys, a little something different today. No comics or video game content. Instead, I'm going to do a bit of a quick uh, restaurant review. Over this past weekend, uh, the wife and I got a sitter uh, for the kid. Went out on a date. Couldn't really decide where we wanted to go, what we wanted to do. You know, typical dinner to movie sort of situation, but there weren't any real good movies on. So we were thinking, do you want to go out? Just grab a bite of Outback or something. Which, you know, I like Outback. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they got good steaks. Um, but we didn't, you know, really want to go through the whole restaurant's always crowded and loud and we want to try something local. So instead we head down the other side of the road and we go to a place called the Wine Guy Wine Shop and Bistro. Um, we've seen it on the road uh, back and forth over and over again. But haven't really gone in. But we decided, hey, let's give it a shot. Let's see what it is. If we don't like it, we'll just turn right back around and walk out and do something else. So we go in and uh, it's divided into two sections. The wine shop and the bistro are separated a little bit. You come in, walk around the little bar. Um, the shop, of course, all the line, all the walls are just lined with wine. You walk around the bar towards the right and you get to the restaurant portion. Um, the decor was this kind of rustic European thing. Um, really cozy. Uh, the tables were this nice, pretty wood and you had like, little lights hanging down with fans and just, you know, kind of the brick walls and metal shutter kind of doors. And it was all very nice. Even the bathrooms had a nice little bit of decor to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn cough. Um, but we get in and... It, it's weird to go to a wine place because I don't really drink. Uh, the smell of red wine makes me gag, and I'm not really a fan at all of the taste of white wine. I made some real sour faces um, that night. So my first uh, impression of a lot of restaurants, and in this case as well, is the water. That's what I'm going to be drinking all night, so I want to make sure that you know it's good water. And it was really good water. I know that seems like such a minor thing, but uh, it set the tone. You started off with something you know so minor that made a big difference. So, good decor, good glass of water. Let me scratch my little hand here. Ah, much better. Um, so the waitress comes and you know we're looking at the menu. She goes through all uh, the descriptions of the wines and it's very cool. Uh, my wife orders an appetizer for us and a wine flight. It's kind of like a little taster of uh, three or four different wines. Um, the appetizer was uh, bruschetta. You know, the bread, the sliced tomatoes, it's sort of almost shredded basil. It looked like what you'd have, like a lettuce on a taco and a dark balsamic vinaigrette. Um, went over gangbusters, apparently. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the vinaigrette. It's just really, really strong, but my wife loved it. A half-size salad. We were kind of cautious at first um, when, I guess, the owner, manager, whomever came out, and we had these little uh, square, rectangular, long, thin plates. And they were like, oh, the, the serving sizes may suck. And he said, you know, uh, a tapas size is like one crab cake and a full size is two crab cakes. I'm like, fuck, we're not even going to have any food. But my wife goes ahead and orders a half-size salad, half-size Caesar. It comes out, it's huge. This is a huge salad. Um, and it was really good because every bite had dressing on it, but none of it was smothered. Everything was just, had flavor to it. So it was a really good sort of a, a salad to start with. The wine flight comes out, and I think she got the sweet wine flight. Four whites, you know, in order, uh, numbered with descriptions of, you know, what you're having and what it tastes like and what to look for, the notes and all. So she's digging on that. Um, food comes out entree. I got the 10 ounce sirloin with au gratin potatoes and the vegetable of the day. I think it was a broccolini. Not that sure what that is, but broccolini. My wife had the chicken, uh, pesto chicken penne. And these are big dishes again. We're not expecting a big meal, but these are big. You know, again, I got the 10 ounce steak and that was your option. You didn't have like a six or something. Um, so my steak, uh, I like a medium well. And when you get to a thick cut of steak, sometimes that's tricky, but they did a really good job of getting it cooked thoroughly um, just a little bit of pink on the inside without burning the outside. So great steak. My wife's pasta, you know, she was saying, oh, this is some of the best sauce she's had. Really, really good. Working our way through the meal. We get to uh, dessert, you know, a chocolate lava cake. 
had the powdered sugar and the syrup and the ice cream and the whipped cream and the cake and very, very cool. Um, plus an extra glass of wine, just, a, you know, of one of the, I think, number three on the sweet wine flight. I don't recall what that is. You guys can look it up. Um, my wife really liked number three on the sweet wine flight. <coughs> um, and now before I get into this, I'm going to say that this is a compliment. Don't take this the wrong way. The service was slow. Not to say I was never without a refill. I was never looking for anybody. I was never wanting for anything. When I say the service was slow, it it's a situation where they wanted you to enjoy your meal. They wanted you to enjoy your food, not just eat it. So everything took time, you know. As you're eating your appetizer, you complete the whole thing before your food comes, you know. You go through um, a glass and a half of wine or whatever before that entree gets there and you eat it and you take your time. And they're bringing out the water every now and again. <coughs> um, checking on us, we never had to wait for anything, but it was slow and that was fantastic. We never got the impression that we were being rushed out. Which you get a lot of times at a fast food place or even a sit down place at Outback. You sit down and they say, here's your stuff, here's your food, get the fuck out. Didn't have that impression at Wine Guys. It was really slow, it was really cool. Not bad slow, good slow. Enjoy your food, enjoy your company. It was really cool. Um, the service genuinely uh, was first rate. Um, personable, attentive, fun. Uh, informative. We had a guy come out um, and describe to us what makes a wine dry. Again, without me, I'm not a drinker, so I don't know what these things mean. When someone says, oh, it's a dry wine with fruity overtones and blah, blah, blah. Fuck, what? He explained it um, taste-wise. He described it scientifically. And sure, I may not be able to identify a dry wine by drinking it. At least I know what they talk about. It made sense. It was cool. Um, one of the minor things that I really enjoyed uh, across in the wine shop area, I think there was a table doing a tasting, and the owner manager guy just grabbed a bar stool from a uh, adjacent table and turned it backwards or whatever and sat there and talked to him for like 15 minutes. Like, that's kind of cool. He's just taking the time to talk about what they're drinking, how they're doing. It's really nice overall. Um, price wise, yeah, you're in a wine shop. Um, you're going to spend money. This was definitely more than we'd normally spend on a meal. Um, but because of the experience taking a little bit longer uh, to eat and to talk and really enjoy each other's company, we didn't have to do dinner in a movie. We actually just had a really nice dinner together. And it was great. <coughs> um, had we been, had we gone to Outback, we would have been rushed through and probably would have ended up seeing fucking Tower Heist, which I have no interest in seeing simply because my wife refuses to watch Wolverine and his boxing robots, which I do want to see. So, it was just, it was nice to take the time. Um, but the money, yeah. Um, for two people, one appetizer, one salad, two entrees, one wine flight, one extra glass of wine and dessert and tip, um, I think we, it was like 112, because I tip generously. It was like 90 bucks and maybe 112, I don't know overall um so yeah if you're gonna go there prepared to you know break out the break out the card um especially if you're a drinker and i know a lot of my friends uh do tend to hit the bottle you know who you are but if you guys are drinkers you're used to coming home with a huge bar tab so this shouldn't be too much of a shock you might as well enjoy your food while you're there um Apparently they have uh, a handful of locations now. I think this may have been the first, the Pickerington location. I can't guarantee that. But they've got them up in Gahanna now. I think they've got one in Cincinnati. If not, it's on the way. They're going to build one somewhere in North Carolina. Um, they don't require reservations at all unless you've got like a party of six or more, which makes sense. So you're able to just walk in. No big deal. Dress code was casual. You know, you shouldn't be coming in and you're... Uh, t-shirt and shorts and sandals or what have you, but you didn't need to wear a tux. Just you know, look decent like a grown-up. Um, it was really cool. I think that you guys, if you want a nice meal, especially if you're uh, a wine drinker and stuff, you want to try something uh, a little bit different than this random bar scene that you're hitting or the random chain restaurants, give the wine guys uh, 
Wine Shop and Bistro a shot. The address, I believe, is the wineguywineshop.com. I'll double check that and put it in the comments. Um, but yeah, give it a shot. Tell them Large Marge sent you. It won't do anything. I just felt like referencing uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So give them a look-see. Uh, go in there, have a good meal, and tell me if you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Bye.